What's up, y'all? This your girl, Miss Maggie T with Atlanta Hawks News. If you're new to the channel, I want you to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss another post from me. But if you want to go ahead and get into some highlights here and updates, but let's first talk about officially it's been announced the State Farm Arena will have a limited number of fans for Tuesday game against the Clippers, approximately about 8% capacity and social distancing in all areas with face coverings required. And the Hawks say they will focus on a safety six, which includes that will include, let me get that out. I'm sorry about that, people. I should have had that up and going. I always just, here we go. All right, so it is limited capacity and physical distancing, mandatory face coverings, contactless entry, screening and transactions, touchless hand sanitizer stations and restroom fixtures, robust cleaning and disinfecting procedures, safe food and beverage distribution practices. So definitely being very precautious there. As well as, uh, let's get into the game from last night. Uh, we lost it 129-115, uh, to the final score there. Um, and just noted, we did have some players that just, uh, like our starters, Trey Young and Clint Capella, they actually were ruled out prior to tip-off. While Gallinari, Okungwu, and Cam Reddish, they were on minutes restrictions. So you kind of know how the game pretty much went from there the first quarter and first half for that matter it went exactly how you know I expected given who was absent for the games the Bucks ran out to a 32 to 15 lead after the first quarter and went on to establish a 24 point lead in the second quarter the Bucks shot over 61 percent in the first quarter while the Hawks only shot about 27 percent from the field and two of 14 from the three for the most part, however, the Bucks just kind of deterred the Hawks from attacking the paint and rim. The Hawks scoring just two points in the paint in the first quarter, forcing the Hawks into a jump shooting team. So kind of how that's kind of how it continued throughout the first half as the Hawks struggled to 47 points on 39.5% shooting from the field and a five of 25 from three, while the Bucks shot 60% in the first half from the field for 66 points. For the game, the Bucks just ended up doubling the Hawks' efforts in the paint and points. The Hawks did find a way to kind of come back just a little bit in the second half and work their way back into contention, cutting the lead to about eight points in the third quarter before the Bucks just kind of reestablished their double-digit lead. Um, the Hawks received scoring contributions from everybody who stepped on the court um, in route to about 36 third quarter points there to begin the fourth quarter the Hawks again cut the lead to about eight points and basically just had a little time to dig further into the Bucks lead and maybe more but for as hard as the Hawks worked to get back to this point their hard work was kind of undone uh, within that last two minutes um, in the space of just a few minutes the Hawks went from having a shot at getting well truly back into this game to trailing from eight points to this game to a blowout of about 17. So about being down about 17 points. So you see how that goes. Of course, the, the Hawks shot over 62% themselves in the second half while connecting on nine of 14 from downtown in a much improved second half that saw them get within single digits twice. So it was starting to look a little better in that second half there. And of course, the Bucks regressed to about 50% shooting themselves in that second half, and their margin built in the first half was enough to carry them through. So it still kind of helped them out a little bit. All in all, the Hawks last night, they looked a little better in the second half showing. Um, and I think many would, you know, as we expect, you know, didn't expect, we thought it was just going to be a, you know, a terrible blowout the way they played that first half. Um, and more specifically, the first quarter. I think the Hawks themselves were satisfied enough with their second half performance, even though they lost the game. And we'll be disappointed with that. The second half performance was encouraging. So, you know, hey, you know, because we are a team that just don't make adjustments in the second half. And, here we, you know, sometimes we just definitely, it's always a great start in offense at first. And then we kind of wavered closer to the end. So, um, that was encouraging, though. The Hawks are back in action in State Farm Arena on Tuesday night on the first night of some back-to-back. Uh, -back. And that will be, of course, against the Clippers that Tuesday. And then we'll return it back with the Brooklyn Nets on Wednesday. So 
some back-to-back matchups there. Um, as far as I know, I don't have the injury report going leading into that game, but I will definitely give you guys an update and highlight on what's going on with those players that were out. But until the next time, you guys, that's all I got for you guys. Just let me know how you felt about that game and just give me some, you know, comments, hit a like and a subscribe. And I appreciate you guys and share this content as well. Um, until the next time, this is Maggie T with Atlanta Hawks News. And I'm out, people. Peace.